Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's video newsletter, well, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at a software tutorial, this time now using Minitab as our software of choice. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, welcome to the latest Minitab tutorial. And this tutorial is going to cover a control chart and in particular it's going to cover the X bar and R control chart in Minitab. So for this we've gone to the process and we've collected some data so because we're going to do X bar each time I visit the process I've collected five data points. It doesn't have to be five but five is a nice is a nice sample size. Um, so we visited the process maybe at the beginning and an hour later and an hour later etc and I've collected these 25 sample groups so there's 25 sample groups in my data set I've got them in the table identified sample 1 to 5 for each visit and then what we're going to do well very simply we are going to go stat we're going to go to control charts and it says control charts for subgroups. This is exactly what we've got. So let's go to the X bar R chart, click next. And then the first thing we've got to do, look, is to tell you that we don't have data in one column. We have data that in one row of columns. So that's the choice we're gonna make. If I click in the box then below that, the data comes alive and I can then tell it we're in sample 1, sample 2, sample 3, sample 4, sample 5. If I go to the X bar options and tests I can turn on the test so when it creates the chart it will actually do the uh, control chart checking it will check for the various out of control symptoms now at the moment look I've only got one of them turned turned on which is that so many standard deviations from the center line in this case it says three standard deviations over here look so that's the only test it's going to do for me I haven't turned any of the others on you can turn these on as you wish so some people like to use the Western electric rules some people have other rules. I think the, the Nelson rules are a, are a common um, list that people use, but different companies might use particular techniques. I believe Shewitt himself only used that first rule and the, let's have a look. It was four out of five, four out of five in zone B or beyond, which doesn't seem to be a choice on here. Oh, it is, there it is, look. So this one here was the one that uh, Schuetz used himself um, and I believe that would be it there, four out of five. So that, they were Schuetz's two rules. So I'm going to switch both of those on and click OK. Then I'm just going to click OK. And now in the session window it generates the graph for me and I can pop that I can pop that graph out here it goes and there it is so it's calculated an upper limit a lower limit it's plotted the average chart at the top it's plotted the range chart at the bottom calculated limits for both charts for me which is excellent something which is really really important you never ever put spec limits on these diagrams spec limits play no part in process control spec limits are only there to grade the parts the control chart is there to grade the process and these limits that are calculated on this um, on this chart have come from the data itself so the process 25 data points hands off no adjustments the data is telling me these control limits now it's nice to have minitab to work the numbers out because it saves the saves the hard yards of doing the calcs but i have to be honest with you 
Personally, the way I would use this is now to take this data and to put it on a hand-drawn diagram. So let me show you the sort of thing I mean. So here is an empty control chart diagram that I use for uh, exercises in my classes. And basically what I would do now, if you think, the first thing to say, by the way, is really this diagram should already contain the run chart that we used to do the calcs in Minitab. So this chart should already be a run chart of the X bar and a run chart of the range results that we got. So we should have this already filled in. What I would then do is take the calculated limits, add them to the diagram. Take the average value, add it to the diagram. Take the limits, add it to the diagram. And then I would use the diagram live at the point of activity to check how in control or not the process is. So this would be a hand drawn chart. Now people ask me why hand drawn? Well, it's very straightforward you want the technician or the operator to see this pattern you want them to look at this graph and see the pattern you want them to see the out of control symptoms as they happen one of the problems that you find with electronic um, spc charts is that the operator simply enters the data they press enter then they walk away and carry on playing with the process they never look at the, at the chart. They never look at the pattern. They never use it for the, for the purpose that it was meant. And the purpose that it was meant for is it's, it's a technician's tool or an operator's tool. It's not for management to observe what happened yesterday. It's supposed to be live at the point of activity, helping the technician or the operator make good decisions about whether they should intervene in their process or not. So it should be hand drawn. But the nice thing about Minitab, Minitab does the calcs for us. And that's really what we should use Minitab for. There it is. So use Minitab to do the calcs. It also does some out of control checking. The uh, X bar R chart is very simple to do using Minitab. Saves a lot of hard yards with the calculations, but then turn it into a hand-drawn chart and get the most out of your SPC charts. X bar R chart using Minitab. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed that little tutorial on that subject. If you've got any questions about Minitab that you want me to help you with, or indeed any questions about Six Sigma uh, at all, or indeed Lean, Please drop me a message either in the comments below. Please subscribe also. Um, but you can also leave me an email. If you send me an email on any question and you need a little bit of advice, I'm more than happy to help you out. And of course, if you want me to come and help you inside your factory fix a technical problem, please drop me a line. I hope to hear from you soon.